Good morning, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of the day this video may find you. I pray that you and yours is doing well, mentally, physically, and spiritually. Um, this is my second part of the video that I did titled, The Supreme Court Cannot Fix What It Did Not Break, okay? The first part, I did it on the spiritual side. This part here, I'm just going to do just a little brief breakdown of the concern, these cases that are, um, that there is so much concern about and kind of explain to you a little bit um, how that actually goes. A lot of people think that just because you're um, a liberal, then you get to come in to the Supreme Court and you can just make up whatever liberal idea that you would like to and um, you and the three or four, however many together, as long as y'all are the majority, that that's the way it's going to be. Um, our court system is very, very complex, okay? That's why you have cases that overturn cases, okay? So if things aren't done right, if you go in and you just um, make a, a case decision and you, you did it um, based on not it being um, um, legally, like if you're going just on your ideas and because the majority went on the same idea, it will be overturned, okay? This is what we have. Like if you go back through our history, I'm telling you, this is how these cases are overturned. Um, so, when things are done wrong, they, they they won't stick, okay? It'll end up getting overturned again, okay? So, I wanted to, to, to just go over that because I wanted to go through these, these, these um, three civil rights cases, okay? And they're civil rights cases because these are cases that the 14th Amendment, the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment and Equal Protection under the Law of the 14th Amendment, that is actually how these cases became law, okay? Um, in the 14th Amendment, um, part of it says that no state shall deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process nor deny any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the law. Okay? So, Roe versus Wade, um, which I think was ruled in January 1973, which was it gave women the right to terminate a pregnancy, which is ending the life of an unborn child. Okay? Um, and they used the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment saying that this right that they're claiming to for a woman to be able to terminate her pregnancy is her fundamental fundamentally her fundamental right excuse me to privacy and that it's that it protects a pregnant woman's liberty her freedom to choose whether to have a child or to abort a child Okay. Uh, it also had in the in the the ruling, but it's not absolute and must be balanced against the government's interest in protecting women's health and protect, protecting the prenatal life. Um, look, they've had other cases that have escalated that. Okay, we all know that. So there has been some changes in in the, the original Roe versus Wade. Okay, but at the time Roe versus Wade was um, that they could not go past the second trimester. Okay, um, Planned Planned Parenthood versus Casey is a case. It altered Roe versus Wade. Okay, and basically crafting what they call the undue burden, okay? And what an undue, what undue burden is, is the legislature, legislature cannot make a particular law that is too burdensome 
are restrictive of one's fundamental rights. So they use that fundamental rights in Roe versus Wade, but they're saying that no laws can be too burdensome on a person, meaning that um, you're burdening me because I cannot handle a child right now in my life. And so I should have the right to be able to get rid of the child because it's going to, the, the child being born is a burden to me. Now, as a Christian, um, I don't agree with, with this, but as a Christian, you get what I'm saying? Um, but by the law, if you look at the law, it's, I'm going to go back to it again where it's saying that no state shall deprive any person life, liberty, or property without due process, nor deny any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the law. Okay? That equal protection of the law and the due process, that's what's opening the gate to all of this. You got to understand that whole separation of church and state, I did a video on that recently. Christians, we supposed to take Jesus with us everywhere. But when you come down to the, the law and these people having to make the law, that's what they're looking at. This is man, okay? We If we want things changed, we have to get that changed in the uh, 14th Amendment. That amendment has to be changed. And it has to be changed in a way where it still doesn't allow people to be abused. So we have to be careful with that, okay? Um, but this is how these cases were won, were won okay? Um, the Obergefell versus Hodge, um, I think it was June 26, 2015. Um, it, they used the Equal Rights and Due Process Clause of the, the 14th Amendment. Okay, um, basically saying, look, um, I'm a man, I like men, I've been dating men, um, I have a man or a woman, I'm a woman, I like a woman, and I, we, I have somebody I've been with, and this is who I want to marry, this is who I want to be with for the rest of my life. Now, um, this case here, it, it overturned Bakers versus Nelson. Uh, in no, uh, that was November uh, 2004, I think. So that was like almost a year, not quite a year, but the, in the next year. Okay. Look, there were other cases before that. That's what I'm trying to tell you. If you don't do stuff right, if you just push through because you're the majority, um, if it's not sound, then there's going to be another case. People going to keep appealing and appealing, and it goes back to court, and it's going to go right back to the legalities of it, okay? So, um, you can't swindle your way through it, okay? You can't um, push your agenda on it. What we have to do as Christians, the video that I had, I got, this is a two-part we have to do our part and help these people in these areas so we, we won't have so many of them wanting to have abortions or so many of them confused about their sexuality, okay? Um, I did a video. Um, that's the two-part. This is a two-part video that you need to watch the other one, and I, it goes in deep detail about that. But um, here's the thing. Um, California had a case and they had given, um, their, the gay rights to what they called a civil union. Okay. And they had all the like legal rights as like, say a heterosexual person has, like for instance, you know, um, on the health care and, you know, um, being able to leave their, their um, spouse, which with that they call them, um, instead of calling them a spouse, it called a union, whoever they was united with, they could um, 
leave them that like say their 401k it was things you know things that heterosexual people have that they can do with their spouse they had where they could do with in a union okay but by the time all of this fighting and stuff got down to uh happen about the gays trying to be get married and the gay and lesbian trying to get married it turned into an all-out attack on heterosexuals okay now one thing that the law should not have allowed to happen was and i'm telling you the only thing that we have sound by law to change is that definition of marriage they should not have never changed the definition of marriage the definition of marriage has nothing to do with their equal equal rights or their due process okay a gay couple and a lesbian couple will never be the same as a heterosexual couple never there they that, that can't happen they can never be the same okay so to take the wording of marriage which is something that comes from the Bible, um, and change the wording of it to mean something else. God meant for a man and woman to be together. Okay, you can't change what God meant. Okay, now that part of that case could definitely be changed. Okay, but now this other part where it's saying the equal rights and the due process clause of the Fourteenth Amendment. I'm telling you, even if they have a majority conservative, and like I said, I want to stra straighten this out here about conservative and liberal, okay? Conservative, like I said on my other video, it means that the government want much to do with how to control your life, to tell you what decisions you should be making and how you should be making them but they want very little to do with you monetarily okay liberal they want the government to have nothing to do with their business stay out of their business stay out of their personal lives but they want the government to pay for what they their mistakes, their errors, their whatever that happens in their life, okay? They want the government's funds, but they don't want the government's help in terms of them to making their decisions. They want to be able, I should be free to make my decisions if I want to make my decisions, but if I make a decision and I mess up, then I need the government to help me pay for it. Conservative. They want to tell you what to do, how to live, but they look. If what we told you to do going to mess you up, we don't want to give you no more money. We're not paying for nothing, and we don't want to pay for nothing. That's why they're trying to shut down Social Security now, okay? Um, But I'm telling you, I get it. I used to be that same way. I voted for, I've only voted for, Um, I've never voted a straight ticket before. But I voted all my voting years, and I've never missed, a, you know, a voting, okay? I've always, well, not always, it's only been three times in my voting history that I voted for a Democratic president. I'm telling you, that whole pro-life, me not wanting these babies to be killed and everything, that and the, you know, Understanding that these people, you know, that's making these choices, that something has happened to them in their lives and they're not making them based on what, you know, what's really, what they really want, that life has conditioned and changed them, things that's happened in their life that caused them to um, make these decisions. I get it. I voted, 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 voted. For them to do it, you know, change it. Oh, we if we get get them in the house and we get them, then we gonna get this changed over. So just like how Donald Trump been telling us since um 2016 that he's gonna get a new health care plan, and here it is, we uh around 39, 40 days before he for him to be voted on again. 
And he still haven't came up with one. It's been four years. Listen, just because people telling you that they can do something doesn't mean it's going to happen. I'm 51 years old. If you're just about as old as I am, you know yourself that you've been voting for a certain group that and you have not gotten what they've been telling you you're going to get. Okay? It is not, you cannot bully your way through the government because there's laws that have to be abided by. Okay? So, I just wanted to do these little videos, these two videos on this subject matter, and I hope they are helpful for you. I am going to put some links um, to information that you can, um, that you'll have with these, um, that, you know, with, with, that you can study to go and look your own self to find this information out. Um, look, we're in the middle of a pandemic, so be safe, be prayerful, be faithful, but be vigilant, okay? Um, we got almost um, around two, 200,000 more people that's, that's projected to die before this year is out by the, the you know, January, first of the year. Um, I pray that it's not you or yours, okay? Um, be vigilant. Um, like and subscribe. Like, hit that like button, that subscribe button. Uh, if you feel like my videos are helpful to you, um, I got another one that I'll be um, posting up this week that's going to be really, really good. Um, I think that um, it'll be really helpful for us if you really listen. Because God is trying to tell us something in this, y'all. He really is. Y'all have a blessed day. Bye.